So, Julio DeAngelis, Tommy McGovern, Bruce Olson, Gordon Ng, guys I grew up with as, in Providence, Rhode Island, as often as not were not Jewish. And I knew where they came from. They knew where they came from because they knew their background. They could go back to their ancestral roots very easily, Ireland, Italy, and find ancestors that went back for centuries. I couldn't, and I was envious of that. Somehow, the idea of homeland and Jewish identity was linked in my kid brain. So this talk is about how later in life I went looking for my roots and my Jewish identity and my homeland. But as a kid, I was just puzzled. I would ask my folks, where did we come from? And they said, Eastern Europe. Well, my mother's side was redheaded, freckles. My father's side was shorter, darker skin, black hair. His father looked uh, Indian, Asian Indian to me. They couldn't possibly come from the same place. <laughs> my mother's sister said we came from Poland, Lithuania. Well, I knew a family of Lithuanians. They were gigantic and they were blonde. They didn't look anything like any of my side. <laughs> so that didn't make any sense. So the question was, where am I from? I was puzzled. Now, you might say, well, there are other roots. There's faith, there's community and family. Didn't work in my case. My mother's father, Orthodox, lived with us when I was a little kid. And he went to shul every day, all day. He came from another century, really, I think, or belonged in one, and he wasn't sharing. My folks were what I call just who we are, Jews. Just who we are. Passive, temple once a year, not a lot to chew on. So what was I left with? Yiddishisms, potato pancakes, Jewish comics, and that was it. Not much to build an identity out of. So I, I felt kind of lost. In fact, I worried as a kid. Suppose there's a test that they give you to see if you're Jewish. I didn't know if I could pass it. That was as a kid. So I went to New York and I became a reporter, a storyteller with my cartoons. And I discovered at age 30, or 50, excuse me, <laughs> uh, uh, a travel gene. From then on, my partner Janet, also a reporter, and I would hit the road. And the further away we got from our home, the happier we were. In 1989, we uh, headed for the Middle East. Now, I know Israel is terribly important to the Jewish people as symbol, as miracle. But I didn't have a direct connection to Israel, and I didn't really know much about the history. I really saw it much more as an American than as a Jew. We went there, we went through Israel, we went through Jordan, we went through Egypt. On the way through Egypt, we stopped at Mount Sinai and climbed it in the middle of the night. That's what tourists do, to be there at sunrise. As I stood there at the top of that mountain, my thoughts as a kid came back to me. And I thought, how did my family, your family, get from the bottom of this mountain to Providence? to Chicago, wherever. What happened? There's this giant black hole for me. I decided to find out. Came back to the city and went to the Judaica section of the library. And you know, the shelves are bulging with books by smart people for smart readers. But there was no <laughs> overview history for an undereducated skeptic of a cartoonist who grew up with comic books. It wasn't there. And then, purest chance, luck, and a lot of chutzpah on my part, I got the opportunity to do that book. And I set out, driven, propelled by my ignorance, with my reporter's instincts and tools, and a list of experts from across the denominations to vet parts, I went to work. I did know this. If I was going to start on Jewish history, it should start with biblical history being prologue. So I went all the way back to the beginning. Abraham and Sarah on the way, on the road already, heading for Canaan. Canaan, a little rocky land, a bridge between Asia and Africa and Europe. 
and, over, and attacked constantly by the Assyrians and the Greeks and the Babylonians. And yet the Jewish people hung on to that hunk of land for 2,000 years. They lost 10 of the 12 tribes, but they hung on until the might of Rome just turned, proved to be too much, and they were booted. And they became, as uh, to paraphrase Paul Cowan, orphans in history. And so I followed the migrations, which started during the Roman period as they spread out around the Mediterranean and then moved on to Spain, as we know, Islamic Spain. They moved north up into central barbaric Christian Europe. And possibly my father's line went up around the Black Sea to Odessa and Kiev and Minsk, perhaps. And then the Jews were forced out of Spain and Portugal, headed north to Amsterdam, to the New World, back across the Mediterranean to the Ottoman Empire, and the Jews in Central Europe, Germanic area, took a sharp right turn over to Poland and Lithuania, yes, Lithuania, which turned out in the 16th and 17th century to be the center of Jewish religious life. And so I was following century after century where the Jews were, including the main characters in uh, Jewish history. For example, Maimonides, who claimed by logic he could interpret the miraculous. And Herzl, tall, elegant Viennese Herzl, through whom I was able to begin my study of the history of modern Israel. And let me say here, overview histories don't, or they tend to overlook women. Well, in my lifetime, you don't overlook Jewish women. <laughs> now, there was a woman, I'll mention one, Donna Gracianasi, uh, who um, was able to smuggle Jewish people out of uh, Spain in her company's wine casks. Not particularly well known, but an incredibly courageous woman, especially in those days of the Inquisition. So then there's the Holocaust. How to deal with the horror of the Holocaust. And I decided there's no way to allow that to overshadow all of what I was learning to be the amazing richness of the Jewish people. And so it didn't. Little by little, I was turning my study into what was becoming a celebratory history, despite my wisecracks and my cartoons and my ironic asides. And then in the beginning of the 20th century, there was this huge rush out of Eastern Europe, as we know, in all directions, including, of course, a huge number towards the United States. And among them was my father's father, <laughs> who showed up at Ellis Island and was assigned a generic name. I have no idea what our name was. Makatinskyovskyevich, <laughs> which has some substance, at least. But then I thought, how long did they have that name, Makatinskyevich? 100 years? Before that, in Iran, in India, it was another name. Somehow, surnames like homelands in my life, come and go. The Jews of the United States, as we know, enormously productive, made huge contributions to um, the American culture, at the same time holding on to their own faith, community, and family. Not always in the same way. Jews have a way of fine-tuning these things, as these people did. And so in my travels around the world, I found everywhere I went, and I've gone around the globe, Jewish presence. For example, and there are a million examples, I was in Singapore with Janet one day, rushed into a doorway to get out of uh, a, a sudden downpour, and it turned out to be we had run into a synagogue. <laughs> and the gentleman in there said, of course, come in, sit down, dry off, but pointing at Janet, you have to go upstairs. And I realized I was in the synagogue of my grand grandfather, my orthodox grandfather. In, in Kocha, in southern India, we came across a synagogue that had been sitting there since the 1500s, sheltering Jews of all different backgrounds, depending on the era, whether it was Indian, Middle Eastern, Dutch, Portuguese, English, 
still there today. We were flying back and met a woman who was on a B'nai B'rith tour of Japan. We said, have you seen those wonderful Kyoto temples? And she said, we went to the temple. It was very nice. We met the rabbi. <laughs> He's Japanese, you know. Uh, we're everywhere. You each have an adventure story of your own that's special, I've discovered. So, back to my original idea about Homeland. It's not Julio's <laughs> Homeland at all. It is instead the journey through time and space and without end. It's the story. Comedy, tragedy, achievement, humanity. It's the collective voices that have come down to us through 4,000 years. Come on. So I have learned who I am, finally, because I now know where I come from. I am just another member of the tribe. So thank you very much for your attention. Thanks for watching Eli Talks. Click through or subscribe to the Eli Talks channel for more inspired Jewish ideas.